Le 25 septembre 2015, les Nations Unies ont publié sous le nom de Agenda 2030 les 17 objectifs qu'ils veulent atteindre au cours des 15 prochaines années. Tandis que son prédécesseur, l'Agenda 21, se limitait presque uniquement à des aspects écologiques, le nouveau programme vise presque tous les domaines de la vie. Même si l'Agenda 2030 donne l'impression positive qu'il s'agit de prospérité, de paix et de justice sur une planète saine, en y regardant de plus près, on s'aperçoit cependant que tout n'est qu'un nouvel ordre mondial pour réduire tous les peuples en esclavage. Et voici en grande ligne les outils prévus. La centralisation des banques. L'abolition de l'argent liquide pour s'assurer un contrôle total de toutes les relations d'affaires. L'approvisionnement en nourriture régulé globalement par une minorité, surtout avec quelques grands groupes qui emploient principalement le génie génétique. L'interdiction de toute tentative d'autarcie. La suppression des contrôles nationaux sur les infrastructures et les ressources, en particulier les terres et l'eau, à force de privatisation dictée par le FMI, comme on le voit déjà actuellement en Grèce. La dissolution de la souveraineté nationale à l'échelle mondiale, l'imposition rigoureuse d'un monopole global de l'information, la surveillance généralisée, mind control, au moyen de la radiotechnologie mobile, des prétendues zones de libre-échange, TTIP et CETA, pour achever d'amener complètement l'Europe sous le diktat de l'oligarchie des banques américaines. Des taxes forcées sous n'importe quel prétexte, par exemple dans le domaine de l'environnement, des réfugiés, etc. Des guerres d'agression et de destruction initiées par les États-Unis et l'OTAN, sous couvert de missions de maintien de la paix et de la démocratie, le tout dans l'optique de déstabiliser l'Europe en l'inondant avec des réfugiés pour en fin de compte pouvoir la réduire en esclavage. La citation de l'écrivain et journaliste allemand Ludwig Born résume bien cela. « Si les gouvernements sont malades, alors les peuples doivent garder le lit. » I'm from the United States, California, and uh, my topic, what I speak about, is uh, one of the most vitally important issues of our age, and that is the United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. It is the inventory and control plan, inventory and control of all land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all construction, all means of production, all food, all energy, 
all information and all human beings in the world. And this is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations back in 1992. It's a United Nations plan. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. And so many of us around the world think that, um, well, sustainable development, it just sounds so great. Isn't it about recycling and creative reuse and, uh, and creating energy and food resources for everyone? And the answer is no, it really is not. It's about moving populations into city centers, concentrated city centers, and clearing them out of the rural areas. So I became, um, I found out about it um, in a very unusual way, actually, because uh, I spent my career as a legal uh, witness, as an expert witness for the California Department of Transportation. I'm an expert in land use and land valuation. And so, of course, I was valuing property for the government so that the government could acquire that property for road projects. And what I found about 10 years ago, uh, around uh, or 10 or 13 years ago, uh, was that land actually, it was very difficult to say what it was worth because you couldn't know what people could do with it because they were being restricted from using their property. And as I explored that and found that it wasn't just in the San Francisco Bay Area where, uh, where I was working, it was in fact all across the nation and the world, I looked behind that and I found United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. The goal is to move everyone out of the, uh, the rural areas and into the large cities and to destroy representative government and uh, to move it into um, to a more uh, to government by unelected boards and commissions. Now here in the EU, of course, you have, you know, you've already moved to that position where uh, it's an erasure of jurisdictional boundaries, an erasure of uh, national boundaries. And that is the goal because, as the big new Brzezinski said in 1995, um, you can't just impose globalization uh, pell-mell uh, as a total uh, movement. You have to do it incrementally, and the way to do that is through regionalization. Every nation that signed on to Agenda 21 has its, uh, its local Agenda 21 plan. People in the United States are completely unaware of this. If I go out and talk about this, the United States press will attacks me and calls me a conspiracy theorist, which is it's totally ridiculous. It is a conspiracy, but it's not a theory. It's a fact. Uh, here in Europe, um, it's openly spoken about, lo Local Agenda 21. The principles are public-private partnerships, which is fascism. And this is how it's implemented uh, on the ground, is through this joining together between corporations, non-governmental uh, organizations, and governments in order to cut out the, you know, the actual individual, your voter, and instead to take that to a level where we literally cannot penetrate. And this is the goal. So this has already far progressed in Europe. Right now in the United States, uh, we are moving into uh, major, massive regionalization. The United States has 50 states, and it's divided into cities, counties, and states, and then the federal government. Instead, Agenda 21 is top-down. It's global, regional, neighborhood. And none of those positions is elected. Now, um, what this truly means is if you tell people that they have to build only smart growth, high density development in an urban center, and then no development, no buildings, no residential, no commercial can happen outside of that very, very concentrated area, then what do you have? You have a concentration camp of the future. This is exactly what it looks like. And you see, it's very much more subtle and much more sophisticated than it was when the Nazis were doing it. You are not going to get thrown on a train car. You'll have your family well monitored. You will have your energy restricted. You will have your, uh, your, your school service cut, your, uh, your sheriff service cut. You will find that you are not able to get your goods to market, and then you have to move into the city, and then you will move into this high-density development that is subsidized with our property tax dollars, and pretty soon you will have the Wildlands Project 
which is predicated on moving people out of the rural areas. And this is how it happens. So, um, you know, people say, well, hey, nobody's getting me off my land. Well, it's very easy. You know, no one's going to come to your door with a gun, but they will move you off your land and you will be in the cities. And those cities will be full capability of surveillance, monitoring, and control. These buildings, these high-density buildings, are being built with a concept of eyes on the street. You become basically a deputized police adjunct. Your job is to watch the street. Your job is to watch your neighbor. The, the war on terror is a war on you. And we all know this. We feel it. This is why we need to stop it. So this is our plan, is to use the courts at this point and stop this plan. And we're working on it. meter is um, part of a much bigger picture and a much bigger design. A two-way transmission device that ties into the larger smart grid plans that are being built out across the world. Ce réseau entièrement pilotable, c'est le réseau intelligent, aussi appelé Smart Grid, la combinaison d'équipements informatiques et électroniques pour piloter le réseau électrique. L'élément essentiel à ce système, c'est votre compteur électrique qui devient communicant. Grâce au Smart Grid, on pourra détecter une surtension liée à une trop forte production et y apporter immédiatement la meilleure solution. Soit en activant le fonctionnement d'appareils électriques, votre chauffe-eau par exemple, soit en passant un ordre de stockage à la batterie de votre véhicule électrique. En cas de sous-tension, ce même compteur donnera un signal de réduction temporaire des consommations du client. Cette nouvelle technologie dessine le profil des réseaux de demain. En France, ce sont 35 millions de compteurs communicants qui permettront de gérer cet équilibre entre les productions et les consommations. Un réseau piloté au service de tous, capable d'intégrer et d'accompagner nos usages actuels et futurs de l'électricité. The definition of a smart grid is a wireless system that will fundamentally turn every single appliance in your home into the equivalent of a transmitting cell phone. That's every, every computer, every television, every furnace, every air conditioner, every coffee machine, every printer. Every single appliance that you have in your house will eventually, in a smart grid, have an antenna that's embedded into it that will transmit your usage data to a smart meter on the outside of your home that will then transmit your usage data to another tower receiving a usage signal that will then go to the utility company for supposedly billing purposes. Not all signals will just be about your individual use. There will be aggregate uh, meters that will bounce signal from house to house to house within a neighborhood that will then accumulate all of the usage data that will transmit that to the utility company. Now, what that will do is that the end metering system that is transmitting all of that data will be firing an RF signal at many, many times a second, which will increase the average homeowner's radio frequency, radiation exposure, exposure et c'est aussi l'accès à de nouveaux usages. Donc ce compteur dit intelligent, c'est vraiment aussi un projet de société derrière une filière technologique créatrice d'emplois, puisqu'on estime à 10 000 emplois le nombre d'emplois potentiels sur la fabrication, mais il y a aussi l'installation, il y a l'entretien, il y a les nouveaux usages qui vont être portés par ce, ce compteur intelligent. Et donc ce que je souhaite, par la loi de transition énergétique, mais aussi par la mise en mouvement des filières industrielles et de nos savoir-faire, accélérer l'objectif. Notre objectif, là, c'est 3 millions de foyers, donc équipés en 3 ans, on va essayer d'aller plus vite, puisque normalement 80% des foyers doivent être équipés en 2020. Normal cell walls, fairly separated and looking healthy. 
So after two minutes of exposure in front of the smart meter at about one foot away, we see a totally different story. Sample one, you can see a lot of degradation in the cells. The cell walls have been broken and you see changes in the cells which are called mycoplasma. It shows a mutation to the cell. In the second sample, we see a different type of degradation to the cell membranes. You can see a corrugation here. This is called bottle cap formation and it's known that this occurs due to oxidation or uh, exposure to free radicals. So this third subject, uh, when we did her sample, she had to be pulled away from the meter after 45 seconds because she complained about an increasingly severe headache. And here you see a phenomenon called Rouleau, where the red blood cells are stacking up, which makes it very difficult for the blood to deliver oxygen to the tissues as they would be their normal function. I'm Melissa Melton reporting for InfoWars.com. As Agenda 21, the United Nations plan to take control of the world from the local level up grows across America under the guise of the Green Movement. Our national sovereignty, our personal freedom, and our very way of life is under attack. What is, the, what is Agenda 21 for new listeners? Why is it important? And what are the new big developments? I mean, is it safe to say the battle is joined right now, Rosa? For people who don't know what Agenda 21 is, it's basically, it's not what is Agenda 21, it's almost what isn't. It is the blueprint, it is the action plan to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all minerals, all construction, all animals, all means of production, all energy, all information, and all human beings in the world. It is a completely comprehensive plan, it's global, and it's implemented locally. Agenda 21 highlights include the destruction of the family unit in the name of sustainable development, with people being forced to live in tight, compact cities and high-rise stack em and pack em apartments no bigger than this 16 by 16 foot space. This map, entitled Simulated Reserve and Corridor System to Protect Biodiversity, illustrates how the UN's Agenda 21 plan would work in the United States. Under this takeover, all personal property rights would cease to exist. The red zones, which make up the map's majority, will be mandated for little to no human use. The yellow zones are buffer zones for highly regulated use. Only in the scant green areas is any normal human use allowed. The tiny black dots are the dense megacities, where transportation will be tightly controlled, freedom will be restricted, and people will be packed in like sardines, living in tiny 275 square foot units amounting to little more than jail cells, all in the name of saving the earth. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs>